Okay. So welcome to networking and how to build a community of support. I know we have different people here who may be in internships, you may be in a campus role working this summer, or maybe you just want to learn about the topic and you're excited to find out more. So welcome to all of you. Um, all of you have a unique perspective and I think this will help everybody. So we're going to start with what is networking? This is the agenda for today. Why network? How to network effectively, hopefully some concrete tips. And this goes from informal connections to informational interviewing to using LinkedIn, which hopefully everybody at least has a profile started. And then once you establish these relationships, how do you maintain those relationships? So that's what we'll cover today. So I'm curious if you wanna go into the chat, what do you all think of when you hear the word networking? And what, what do you feel? What do you associate with networking? What images come to mind? I'm curious uh, what you all have, par have participated in to date and if you have any sort of assumptions about it. Meeting new people, asking them about their jobs. Absolutely. Anybody else? Making connections and building a rapport. Perfect. Absolutely. You never know where your next internship or job might come from. Does anybody have any negative associations with networking? I'm curious about that. Hopefully not. But yes, all of those are good answers. So essentially what we're doing is we're talking about building and maintaining professional relationships. That's what this all is. Awkwardness, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so building and maintaining professional relationships, it really is just relationship building in a different context. It can be in person, it can be online, and you don't need to know someone already in order to connect with them personally and invite them into your network or invite yourself into their network. It's okay to sort of cold call when you're, work, when you're working to build a relationship with someone. So why do we do it? We do it to learn, especially at the stage in our careers that many of you are at right now. So we can learn more about a specific field or a graduate de degree program you're interested in. It can help you discover new internship opportunities or a job lead potentially. There might be whole areas or companies or organizations that um, you have, have no real entree into until you make a connection there. There's also something called the hidden job market. And that means that many positions are sort of pre-filled in a sense before they're even posted, or perhaps they're posted, but there are conversations happening behind the scenes. So part of the goal of networking is that you know a circle of people that may have an opening for something. And then when they think of people, hmm, who might be a good fit for this role, then you're the person that comes to mind. So when you consider networking, and relationship building. There are lots of people in your life already that you may not think of as potentially in your network, but they really are. So you have classmates. One of the things that I always urge students to do is that when you have a LinkedIn profile and you start a new class, sit down in the first few weeks of your class and start an invitation campaign and send a LinkedIn invitation to everybody in your class because you never know where those people are going to be in 10 or 15 years, and then you've already got them in your LinkedIn network. I did that when I did my master's degree. You also have coworkers, people that you work with in a campus role, people in an internship, people that you might work with off campus. And one thing to keep in mind too, is for anyone that does babysitting, sometimes those are very fruitful connections as well. And there are students who've had lots of great opportunities come along because of someone that they know through babysitting. Also, if you are in a recreational club or an activity or some sort of professional organization, um, professors, supervisors, people you might meet at meetings or conferences, advisors you have on campus, and even your own friends and family, you may have an aunt or an uncle or a cousin that's doing something that's really applicable to what you need to learn about. 
take a second to admit a couple other people. And then consider what you could potentially know, who you could potentially know. So if you're in an internship or a job right now, there are other interns. They have all sorts of exciting, interesting experiences, and they can be invited into your network as well. The organization's leadership. So maybe the supervisor of your supervisor, and maybe someone other, other than that in a different department, potentially, who you think has an interesting background that you want to connect with. And then again, the person who does supervise you directly or that might be a mentor and have a mentoring role in your life there, or even clients. So let's say you're working in an advertising agency or something like that. You might come across all sorts of different clients from all sorts of walks of life with all sorts of fascinating backgrounds. And that's an opportunity to introduce yourself, get to know them a little bit. They'll know you're an intern or that you're a college student and what your interests are. And some of them may be really open to helping you. Then of course, don't forget about Barnard alums and the people that you can meet on LinkedIn. So we do have a Barnard College LinkedIn group. Um, and one of the things I always tell students is that you're not earning just a diploma. You're, the work that you're putting into all of this is earning you the network at Columbia and Barnard. There are tens of thousands of people where you automatically have a, a connection and an introduction. And you should not, uh, not waste that because it can be really powerful. Whoops. So in terms of informal connections, this is essentially making friends, but in a professional context, right? So we have the proverbial water cooler conversation. You run into someone in the hallway or at the refrigerator, at the water cooler, and you just chat a little bit and slowly you build a rapport and a relationship with them. You might have team meetings where your unit that you're working with directly is getting together on a weekly basis. You might also have broader organizational meetings. Maybe you have a monthly staff meeting or you have cross-departmental meetings. Also, some places have social events. They may have a little 4 p.m. happy hour they host or a barbecue or a picnic or something like that. Those are really natural, easy ways that you can connect to someone because there's already a context for it. There's already sort of an excuse to talk to them. And then once you feel ready, or if you're ready already, you can just reach out and say, hey, I really am interested in your background. I'm an economics major at Barnard College. I know you work in the department uh, next door to me. I would really love to have coffee and connect or maybe even have lunch and connect or someone that you had a meeting with. I really thought your points were super interesting. I'd love to learn more. Could we grab coffee? And the worst that'll happen is they'll say I'm not available, right? And then once you've initiated these relationships, it's important to keep in touch. So you don't want to squander all this work you put into everything. And we'll talk a little bit later about some strategies for keeping in touch. So the next thing would be informational interviews. This is sort of stepping it up a little bit. So beyond the informal connection into something that's a little bit more structured. These are essentially conversations you conduct to find out more about a particular career path or organization. So let's say that you say to yourself, you know, I've always been interested in consulting, but I don't really know what that's like. I don't know if it would fit my personality. I don't know if I'm studying the right things. I would really love to talk to somebody who's just a pro and gets it and can help me out. The point is that you are asking the questions. This is an opportunity for you to interview. So you might ask, do you have any tips on getting an internship? Do you have any connections for a valuable internship? Would you recommend additional education that I pursue? What might be some of the challenges that I'll, that I'll uh, encounter? What are benefits that you see? Ask anything you can think of. But before you ask the questions, it's really important to do your research. So you always wanna demonstrate your professionalism, I'd really make the most of the conversation. If you go into the conversation cold and you haven't really taken time to do some Googling and look at the website, then that's going to show it's always good to be prepared. And last but not least, never ever ask for a job. So this is not the point in time where you're going to say, and by the way, after we're having this conversation, is there any way that you could hook me up with a position that sort of defeats the purpose of setting up an inter in informational interview and doing that relationship building. So you wanna save that for another time. Timing is everything. So 
informational interviews are best when you can do them before you're an active job applicant. So don't necessarily apply at IBM and then say, oh, I have this LinkedIn connection. I should ask them if I can do an informational interview after the fact, because whatever they tell you may be able to help you in your job search and may be able to help you prepare your materials. You, it also sets you up to have a support system once you do start applying. So if you have questions or you need some feedback or some pointers, you've already got a group of people ready to go. And again, you don't wanna ask someone that you just met in an informational interview to provide a referral for a role um, you've already applied to. So don't ask them to hire you and don't say, oh, by the way, I already applied to something. Could you put in a good word for me? that's a conversation that you should have before you apply because it kind of puts them on the spot when you do it that way. So let's talk a little bit and give you some concrete examples of what you might be able to request in an email when you send out um, something for somebody you'd love to connect with. So always address it personally. Um, this says, Dear Miss Davis, you don't want to be too generic because personal is always better. It shows a degree of respect and who they are. You can introduce yourself, set the stage right away. I'm a senior majoring in economics at Barnard College. Right away, the reason I'm contacting you is that I'm in the process of gathering information about career opportunities and financial services. And I saw on LinkedIn that you're currently working at whatever it might be in their investments department. So the point is that you don't wanna waste their time. You wanna keep it short and sweet and concise, well thought out, so that at a glance, they understand what you need. More about you. I'm, I've always been interested in investment banking and I was hoping you could provide me with some insight. Again, specific ask, so not, not putting too much fluff in the email. This is what I would love from you. Insight into how you transitioned from your liberal arts degree into the field. And then you're closing with the ask, right? Would you be willing to meet or chat? If so, I'll follow up. That makes it clear that you have an action that you're trying to take, and it hopefully will get something concrete out of your efforts. And then be polite, close with a warm regards or as sincerely, put your name, you can put your email and contact information there as well, just so they have it at a glance. If you have a LinkedIn profile, you could put it there as well. And you just, again, wanna be focused and make sure that uh, they feel you're not wasting their time, which is easy to do when we don't mean to do it. So I'm curious what some of you might ask yourselves if you had an informational interview. If you could take a moment to brainstorm some questions. So I am going to put in some breakout rooms. One second. Give me a second. I thought it was going to sign these automatically, but I feel like it's not. So I'm assigning breakout rooms. We'll take five minutes. Second.
So I hope at least some of you had some good conversation and were able to talk about different things that you could ask. Anybody wanna to volunteer to type some items into the chat to share with the group if you all had some good ideas in your brainstorming? Or you can come off mute if you'd like to talk. Absolutely. What are the responsibilities of this position? Typical day at work. I love that because sometimes we make assumptions about what a typical day might be. Favorite and least favorite part of the job. Work-life balance, very important, especially with our recognition nowadays of the fact that it hasn't always been so balanced. How did you get into the field? What's one thing you would have done differently when applying? Absolutely. What other people in the field are like? What does the hiring team look like for an ideal employee? What skills are important? These are all really good questions. You actually got ahead of me and went and asked questions that I was gonna recommend myself. So A plus. So some of the things that I thought of were based on what you know today, what advice would you give yourself when you were in college? Rewarding part of the job? Absolutely. I, so I always wonder if someone could go back in time and talk to themselves. I even think about this for myself. What would I have said to myself when I was in college? I went to a liberal arts college um, in Ohio that is much smaller, but not unlike Barnard all that much. And I always wonder what I would have told myself. What skills are required for success in your field? Is graduate school a good idea? If so, should I go right away? Should I wait? There are a lot of people that I think say, you know, in hindsight, I should have worked for a little while before I chose a graduate program. What should I look for in an entry level role to help me in my career path? So when I'm looking at things to apply for and looking at different job descriptions, what are the sort of core competencies that I want to get out of these experiences earlier in my career? So in terms of following up, if you have an informational interview opportunity, you always want to write a thank you. Basically, you can never say thank you too much. So as soon as possible, but definitely within 24 hours, write a thank you email. If they suggest a contact that you could reach out to, oh, I'm going to put you in touch with so-and-so, here's their information. Don't wait too long. You never know if they mentioned it to the person. Hopefully they did actually. And you want to make sure that you're not waiting and looking like you're sitting on the information. Always a good idea as well to CC the person that gave you the information. And we wanna say thank you, not just because it's important for your own uh, future support and how you can work on your network and grow your network, but it's also for fellow Barnard students and alums because when you pull someone into your network, they sort of become part of the grander Barnard network. And if you connect with them on LinkedIn and they have a connection to the other people you're connected to, it's, it's one large community. So we always want to mind our manners and do those thank you notes. So speaking of LinkedIn, this is Millie Bear's LinkedIn profile. She looks very intense in this photograph right here. Um, how many of you already have a LinkedIn profile? Put that in the chat. Or maybe how many of you have had one for a little while, or did you just start it recently? It's always a good idea to have one. I actually remember I was uh, asked to join LinkedIn by someone when I had never heard of it before. And I was like, this is fishy. What is this new site? I've never heard of this. So I ignored his invitation. And many years later, I thought that that was very silly of me. Good, Ruby. And for those of you that have it, hopefully you filled out the different sections that are required. Because if you're gonna do a LinkedIn profile, you should spend some time, you can slowly build it up and try to make it as strong as you possibly can. So what are some of the things that you should think about with the LinkedIn profile? Always include a professionally appropriate picture. So this really isn't an Instagram situation or a Snapchat situation. This is something that should clearly show your face with good lighting, a headshot, um, so that they would recognize you if they saw you again. 
make sure that you complete each section of the profile to the best of your ability. So if it asks for descriptive information, if there's um, space to put some sort of narrative text that it sort of sets the stage for what you're listing there, you wanna be succinct, but also take advantage of all of those different sections. Also, take a look at other professionals in your field, see what sort of information they put on their profiles. And then you can always be a copycat and say, you know what, that makes a lot of sense. I think I'm going to pull as much of that information into my own profile as I can. So it looks like you belong in that field. Now, as a communications person, branding is really important. So when you think about your headline, you want to do your very best to make it descriptive, to make it stand out. And part of your personal brand, and this also works with the summary um, section as well when you introduce yourself. So when you think about your personal brand, there's lots of different skills and abilities and qualifications and personality traits that I'm sure all of you share. So you wanna think a little bit about how do your items combine to make the unique person that you are and how can you think of that in a marketing context? So some people might be really creative and really love to write and get their juices flowing and come up with ideas. Um, but there's this other side of them that's also really good at researching. And maybe that's a combination that isn't always found in the same person. So if you're able to highlight anything that makes you the unique combination of traits that you are and all of you are unique, that helps, helps you stand out a little bit. Also use keywords that you're seeing across multiple job descriptions. So remember LinkedIn is sort of like a digital resume and we say the same thing with resumes. You always wanna make sure that you're pulling keywords out of job descriptions. So if they're asking for analysis, use analysis. If they're asking for writing, use writing or presentation ability. Um, if there's a specific technical skill that is in demand for the kind of job you're interested in or the field put that in there as well, because that will immediately jump out to people in that field that are looking at it and be familiar and reassuring. Join groups. There are lots of sort of affinity groups and things you can follow and, and groups that you can join. That's another way to network and identify people who are interested in the same thing. And when you do put out a, a connection request, it's best whenever you can to personalize it a little bit rather than just saying, hi, love to connect. Say a little bit about who you are, why you thought that they would be a great connection. And again, the worst that happens, they just ignore you. That's the worst that can happen. And whenever possible, um, request recommendations. So there's a section in the LinkedIn profile where you can have someone write a note basically saying how fabulous you are. And it's always impressive when I look at a profile and someone has you know, six or seven of those recommendations that speak to different parts of, of your experience and your character and your qualifications. Um, so that's always you know, a really great thing to include. And if you have an internship right now or a campus role or any sort of other job, connect with your supervisor, say, could you just take a second to write a recommendation and then it's there and it'll be there forever. Once. Okay. okay. So we talked a little bit earlier about the fact that once you build these connections, we also need to maintain them. So follow up. Again, it's sort of professional friendship maintenance, right? So, hey, I got a new internship. Hey, I just finished out my junior year. This is some of what I did. You know, oh, I got an award or I was recognized for XYZ at Barnard. There are easy ways that you can keep in touch and just sort of keep the conversation going. This is a sort of a lifelong conversation you're developing. You can also pass on articles and events. So if you're the sort of person that you're not quite ready to, ready to sort of trumpet yourself yet, which I totally understand, and you don't want to talk about yourself right away, though I think that's something we all need to learn to embrace a little bit more. Um, you can pass on articles or say, hey, this is a, a great event I saw, or I went to this conference and I think it would be really helpful for you, um, or isn't this interesting? And that's a little bit more of a passive way to stay in touch that takes a little pressure off of you if you're feeling a little shyer. Also, congratulate contacts if you've learned something great that's happened in their lives. 
Um, everybody loves, you know, a little bit of attention, to be honest. And so if you can say, I noticed this, congratulations, make it a little bit personal, you know, if possible, rather than just saying, hey, congrats, point out why you think it's amazing. People appreciate those little touches. Another easy excuse to say hello, it's the new year in this season of thanks, or it's your birthday. If you can find out that information, especially on LinkedIn for birthdays and such, use that as an excuse, as a touch point, so that throughout the course of a year, you have a touch point a few times with these people that you want to keep in touch with, and it's really a low stakes, easy way. And if you do end up applying for a job at their organization, after you've built that relationship with them, you can let them know that you're applying. So you can even say if they're comfortable with it in your cover letter, oh yeah, I have, you know, I, I've met and talked to Robert several times and he has nothing but good things to say about the organization. I'm really interested in working with you and, you know, hope it can be in touch soon. And actually, while I remember when we were talking about ways to stay in touch, I actually have someone that I worked with about 10 years ago who every year sends a letter about all the things that have been happening in her life to various people that she's collected in her circle over the years. And she puts so much time and effort and thought into it. And it really shows, and it shows the thoughtfulness of her connecting with everyone that, that she knew. It says, it, what it says is that she values us and she's putting the time and effort into maintaining that relationship. So, whoops. As we look to wrap up here, but we, we do have time for some questions and such. Final thoughts. Networking is a natural part of both social and professional life, right? So you can network um, without realizing it sometimes, but you're always building connections and you're always learning and you're always um, inviting people into your community and your circle. People get jobs through networking all the time. Um, I actually had thought about applying for the job I have at Barnard, and I wasn't sure. I was a little bit on the fence. And then I have a friend who I worked with previously who had started at Barnard about a year before, and she said, oh, I thought of you. I knew that you were looking, and they've had so much trouble filling this position. I just thought that you would be a great fit. And so after I applied, she was able to reach out on my behalf and say this person should you know, already be in your uh, candidate pool, but I just wanted to point out, and lo and behold, I got the job. So you really do never know. And in this online world, right, there are so many ways. It's so easy to find people and stay in touch with people, but really do remember that in-person contact is just as important and in some cases more important. So, it's interesting because when I was doing research for my master's, one of the things I looked at is how people share information with one another. And even though I wanted it to say in my heart of hearts that, you know, remote work is just here to stay, we can figure this out as a, as a species and figure out how to connect with one another and these meaningful ways that are just as effective, it really is at least a little bit more effective to create a personal connection in person when you can. And even if that's just an initial contact or an initial connection that then you maintain in the digital world, it really is helpful. It helps you communicate more effectively with one another. And so putting in that little bit of investment, when possible, you can't always do that. But if you have the opportunity, it can really be helpful. And the more you practice, the better you'll be. If it doesn't come naturally to you, just keep at it because it will get better and it will become more second nature. And there really is no downside, right? So again, the worst that can happen is you put yourself out there and someone either ignores you or says no thanks, and that's perfectly fine. And you can move on to the next opportunity, right? So that's all I have here in terms of a formal presentation. Um, I want to thank you all for coming and invite additional questions. If there's something you want to talk about, you can put that in the chat um, and we can talk a little bit more. Yep, everything's recorded, and then we do have a copy of the slideshow, so I will make a note, Camilla, that you wanted to get it. I can send it to you. You're so welcome. Any questions, follow-up? Everybody stay dry. Oh, sure. 
I would say I hear thunder. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> um, so you mentioned like not it's not a good idea to, you know, ask for a job during the coffee chat or, or the informational interview, which totally makes sense. Um, when would you say is like the right time to kind of ask someone if they would put in a word for you or like let them know that you've applied? Or is that just something that you should just go about on your own? I think if you've had the informational interview, and let's assume that it went well, right? There wasn't some strange awkwardness or you thought this person really wasn't the right person to talk to about this. Let's say it went well. Let's say you sent your thank you note. I think it's fine after that um, to, you know, to go back to them because you've laid the foundation. You invested that initial time in creating the connection. Um, and I think most people actually are downright flattered when someone asks for their help or, or wants to connect with them for this sort of reason. So I think it's perfectly fine. And if you get kind of a weird vibe or something, just give them some space, back off a little bit and say, maybe this wasn't exactly the right person to ask. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think when, you know, if I were to do an informational interview with someone, I would expect them to want to leverage me as a contact. So I think that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Thanks. And then we have a question. How would you keep track of everyone you're networked with? This is such an interesting question. Um, I used to do fundraising in my past life, which is very, it's this weird combination of relationship building and then tracking data points about everyone almost obsessively. And the way we do it is through like a customer relationship management system, like a Salesforce or something where you can say, I called them. We talked about this. This is the follow-up action and all the dates and everything are on there. So not everybody is going to be quite that detailed, but absolutely, if you're a spreadsheet person and you say, I have a goal and I have a strategy I've developed and tactics I'm using to get there, and these are the steps that I'm taking and these are the people that are helping me get there and I don't want to forget anything, you can put as many spreadsheets together as you would like. Um, you could also just have a notebook and you could write it down on pen and paper. You could use a notes app with little virtual post-it notes or something that you could color code or rearrange. You could put it in your calendar. Um, Gmail has lots of great filtering options and label options. So these are just data points um, that however it works for you, however you like to manage information in your life, try it all out. Um, and if a spreadsheet works for you, that's awesome. 